In this section, we discuss, we discuss the applications of normalization for particular tasks in which normalization methods can effectively solve the key issues. Generally speaking, the idea of normalization for application is to learn invariant property for discriminative models and edit the distributions for generative models. The key of normalization is that is the statistics related to certain region can represent specific domain information for visual tasks. For example, the, stati the statistics of a set of images sometimes can be used to represent domain information. That is, this set of images are sampled from the same situations. Also, the, st the statistics of one image sometimes can represent the style of the image. Therefore, it is possible to learn domain invariant representation by aligning the distributions among different domains using normalization for discriminative models. It is also possible to edit style information by using the NOP to remove style information and using the MPP to add another style. Here, we mainly review these four topics where normalization can be effectively used. Considering the limit of time, indeed, there are significantly growing papers that normalization are tailored for other applications. Machine learning algorithms trained on some given data, that is, referred to as source domain, usually perform poorly when tested on data acquired on a different settings, that is, referred to as target domain. This is explained in domain adaptation as resulting from a shift between the distribution of the source and target domains. Most methods for domain adaptation thus aim to bridge the gap between these distributions. A typical way of achieving this is to align the distribution of the source and target domains. The idea are the first to investigate the batch normalization the statistic moment in domain adaptation. They observe that the batch normalization is the statistical distributions from different domains, as shown in this figure. This is a Disney visualization of the mid batch of BM feature vector distribution in both the channel and the deeper layers across different data sets. Each point represents the batch normalization statistics in one mini batch. It suggests that first, both shadow layers and deep layers of the deep neural networks are influenced by domain shift. Domain adaptation by manipulating the output layer alone is not enough. Second, the statistics of batch normalization layer contain the trends of the data domain. Based on these observations, they, they propose adaptive batch normalization, where the batch normalization statistics for the source domain are calculated during training, and then those for the target domain are modulated during testing. The algorithm is shown as follows. It can directly adapt to the targeted domain by only recalculating the population statistics of batch normalization. Adaptive batch normalization enables the domain invariant features to be learned without requiring additional noise terms and the extra associated parameters. The hypothesis behind the adaptive batch normalization is that the domain invariant information is stored in the weight matrix of each layer, while the domain specific information is represented by the statistics of the batch normalization layer. However, this hypothesis 
may not always hold because the target domain is not exploited at the training stage. As a result, it is difficult to ensure that the statistics of the batch normalization layers in the source and the target domains correspond to their domain specific information. One way to overcome this limitation is to couple the network parameters for both target and the source samples in the training stage, which has been the main research focus of several follow up works inspired by adaptive batch normalization. Cummins et al. proposed automatic domain alignment layers, which are embedded in different levels of the deep architecture to align the learned uh, source and target feature distributions to a canonical one. Automatic domain alignment layers explore the source and target features during the training stage, in which an extra parameter is involved in each batch normalization layer of the trade off between the source and the target domain. Note that automatic domain alignment layers provide two kinds of rules. One is for the supervised one from the source data, another one is the entry loss for target data, where a prior is expected to be learned. Some et al. user proposed a domain specific batch normalization where multiple branches of batch normalization are used, each of which is exclusively in charge of a single domain. Domain specific batch normalization is different to the arranged batch normalization, where the data from different domains is normalized with the same batch normalization. Domain specific batch normalization learns domain specific properties using only the estimated population statistics of batch normalization and learns domain invariant representations with the other parameters in the network. This method effectively separates domain specific information for unsurprised domain adaptation. This figure visualizes the instance embeddings of batch normalization and the domain specific batch normalization using TSNIC. It can be found that the examples of two domains in the same class are aligned better by integrating that domain specific batch normalization, which implies that domain specific batch normalization is effective to learn the domain invariant representations. Roy et al. further generalized the domain specific batch normalization by domain specific widening transformation, where the source and the target data distributions are aligned using their covariance matrix. Domain specific widening transformation layers widen the source and the target features and project them into a common spherical distribution, for example, this figure, the blue. Blocks. Notably, domain specific widening transformation generalizes previous batch normalization based domain adaptation methods, which do not consider inter feature correlations and rely only on feature standardization. Domain specific uh, widening transformation further consider inter feature correlations and provide a stronger alignment. One et al. proposed the trans transferable normalization, which also calculated the statistics of inputs from the source and the target domain separately, while computing the channel transferability simultaneously. The normalized features then go through channel adaptive mechanisms to reweight the channels according to their trans transferability. Their previous work were introduced on the unsupervised domain adaptation task, where the unable targeted domain data can be available for adaptation. Here, 
to introduce the normalization the application in domain general generalization task. Well, examples in the target domain cannot be accessed during training. This task is considered to be more challenging than unsupervised domain adaptation. Still, I tell proposed domain specific optimi optimized normalization to learn domain invariant representation for domain generalization. They also use different batch normalization for different domains during training. Besides, the population stati statistics. So, I tell also exploited the affine transformation of batch normalization to represent the domain specific information. Moreover, Domain specific optimized normalization normalizes the activations by the weighted average of multiple normalization statistics, typically batch normalization and instance normalization, and keeps track of the normalization statistics of each normalization type, if necessary, for each domain. Chan et al. present an Instances negative whitening loss data. Anyways, the limitations of the existing whitening transformation for domain generalization. Instances negative whitening significantly removing information that occurs a domain shift while meeting a discriminative power of future within different networks. The proposed method does not rely on the explicit closed for form whitening transformation, but implicitly encourages the networks to learn such a whitening transformation through the proposed loss function. As shown in this figure, they selectively remove only those feature covariances that respond sensitively to photometric augmentation such as color transformation. Segregator proposed batch normalization embedding for deep domain generalization. They proposed a multi source domain alignment layer. This layer collects domain specific population statistics and compute instance statistics for test samples. After training, the population and instance statistics map. Map respectively the source domains and the test samples into a latent space. Well, domain similarity can be measured by distances between embedding vectors. The red figures visualize the known domain space using L1 distances by, by means of a Tisney plot of instant, instance normalization and population statistics. Each test sample from the unseen domain, for example, the sketch, can be localized through its instance statistics with respect to no domains embedded by the population statistics. Considering a test sample embedding, that is this, this point, the estimated distance will be used to weight the prediction of domain specific class fields. There are some works in investigating normalization for improving, improving corruption robust on the covariance shift. If one is use different corruptions as different domains, this idea from do domain adaptation can be used for corruption robust problems. Similar to the adaptive batch normalization used in domain adaptation, some works Address to estimate the target statistics to test for improve, improved performance for corruption. For example, Schoenitor proposes to ex exploit her test images to estimate the batch normalization statistics, and they also consider convert the training images statistics if number of test images are small. Finds at your interpret corruption robustness as a domain shift and propose to rectify batch normalization statistics for improved model robustness using the test images. 
This is motivated by perceiving the shift from the clean domain to the corrupt, corruption domain or the style shift that is represented by the batch normalization statistics. Let at all consider a prediction scenario where the mid batch data can be independently distribution obtained, obtained during prediction stages. Under this scenario, they propose prediction time batch normalization that recomputes the batch normalization statistics for each test batch rather than use the population statistics calculated during training. This strategy can effectively improve the computation corruption robust. This prediction time batch normalization is implemented as the standard training model of batch normalization in PyTorch or TensorFlow implementation. One at all also propose fully test time adapt adaptation for domain adaptation or image corruption. They observe that prediction with no entropy have no error rates on corrupted CIFA 100C datasets. Certainty can serve as supervision during testing. They thus use entropy minimization on test data as an optimization objective. The, the fully test time adaptation modulates features during testing by estimating normalization statistics mu and sigma and optimizing transformation parameters gamma and beta. Normalization and transformation apply channel-wise scale and shift to the futures. The statistics and the parameters are updated on target data without use, use of source data. In practice, Adapting gamma and beta is efficient because they make up less than 1% 1, 1 of model parameters. EC also proposes a similar idea for source free domain adaptation. The jointly minimize both the batch normalization statistics match loss and the information maximi maximization loss to find to the encoder. As to the batch normalization statistics match loss, the distribution of unobservable source features by using the batch normalization statistics are stored in the first batch normalization layer of the class bill, and the loss explicitly evaluates the discrepancy between source and target feature distributions based on those statistics. Therefore, minimize this loss can also align the distribution of future extracted by the Fantu encoder between source and the target domain. The idea of learning domain invariant representation by using batch normalization is also used for defining multiple adversary, adversary examples. You at all observe that different types of adversary perturbations include induce different statistical properties that can be separated and characterized by the statistics of batch normalization. The, the thus proposed gated batch normalization to adversarially train a, a perturbation invariant predictor for defining multiple perturbation types. Gated batch normalization consists of multi-branch batch normalization layer and a gated stable network. Each batch normalization branch in gated batch normalization A is in charge of one perturbation type to ensure that the normalized output is aligned for further learning perturbation invariant representation. Meanwhile, the gated stable network is designed to separate the model inputs added with different perturbations. By this design, gated batch normalization can well define the multiple C adversarial perturbations and even on C adversarial perturbations. 
There are several works exploring the idea of rationalization in domain adaptation for personal identification. John et al. investigated the distribution with, with respect to each camera for personal identification tasks. These figures show the corresponding distribution. Each curve corresponds to an approximated marginal density function of each camera. Covers of different cameras demonstrate the differences between the corresponding distributions based on this observation. They view each camera as a domain and emphasize the importance of aligning the distribution of all cameras. They propose the camera-based batch normalization which looks not the domain specific batch normalization but used for person identification tasks. In training, camera based batch normalization disassembles each mini batch and standardizes the corresponding input according to its camera labels in testing. Camera based batch normalization utilizes fewer samples to approximate the batch normalization statistics for every testing camera and standardizes the input to the training distribution. Camera-based camera batch normalization facilitates the generalization and transferability of reidentification models across different scenarios and make and makes better use of intra-camera annotations. Same idea also used for the visible modality and the infrared modality in personal identification scenario. They at all view each modality as a domain and propose modality batch normalization. It also aims to align the distribution of different modality for better learning environment content representation. Okay, there is also work that exploring the idea of batch normalization in domain adaptation for stereo matching. John Atel proposed domain invariant stereo match networks that aims at generalizing where to unseen scenes. The, the proposed domain invariant, domain invariant normalization it normalizes features along the spatial axis for example, the height of the widths to induce style invariant representations similar to instance normalization. Besides, the L2 norm based scaling is also used to normalize features along the channel axles for each spatial position, like the pixel normalization. The idea of applying batch normalization in domain adaptation can be further extended to the learning of universe, universal representations by constructing neural networks that work simultaneously in many domains. To achieve this, the networks need to learn the, to share common visual structures where no obvious commonality exists. Universal representations can not only benefit domain adaptation but also contributed to multitask learning, which aims to learn multiple tasks simultaneously in the same data domain. Banan et al. advocate to learn universal image representations using first the convolutional colors to extract the domain agglomerative agl information, and second the batch normalization layers to transform the internal representation to relevant target domains. The ATL proposed covariance normalization for, mon for multi-domain learning, which provides efficient solution to several tasks defined in different domains. Mojakata ATL proposed a learning paradigm for multi-task learning, in which each task carries its own model patch. This model patch wraps to a small set of parameters that, along with a shared set of parameters, consistent, 
constitutes the model for the task. For example, they use both the beyond the population mean or variance and the actual scale value for each task. Style transfer is an important image editing task that enables the creation of new artistic works. Image style transformation algorithms aim to generate a stylized image that has similar content and style to the given images. The key challenges in this task is to extract effective representations that can disentangle the style from the content. Researchers found that the high layers activation of real networks has semantic information and therefore can be used to represent the content. And use the no layers activation of new networks as style representations. To be specific, the style representation is usually based on the gram matrix, which is the statistical information of the future activations. The objective is to minimize the distance between the stylized images with the content image and the style images under the respective content and image representations. To generate the stylized image is use online optimization or train the image transformation network. The online optimization based method initially initially the style the stylized images are randomly generated then adjust the image pixels based on the gradient with respect to the image pixel. This gradient is from the objective that minimizes the content representation between the content image and the stylized images, also minimizes the style representation between the style images and the stylized image. This online optimization based method can well generate the desired images. However, it costs too much time, therefore, image transfer network methods are proposed. It takes as input a content image and output the stylized image directly. The network is trained on many content images using the same loss function of the above introduced. The key advantage of applying normalization to style transfer is that the normalization operation can remove the style information while the normalization representation recovery in contrast introduces the style information. In other words, the style information is intuitively editable by normalization. In a seminal work, Uniano et al. proposed the instance normalization to remove instance-specific contrast information, that is a style, from the content image. Since then, instance normalization has been a basic module for image style transfer, for image style tasks. Inspired by that, the activation statistics can represent the style. The conditional instance normalization methods address to just use the learnable or fine parameters, the lambda and the beta, to represent the style. So, this method can use only one mode to know multiple style representations, where the previous method usually have to train specific model for every style. This method shows an amazing observation that all convolutional weights of a style transfer network can be shared across multiple styles, and it is sufficient to tone parameters for an alpha transformation after normalization for each style. Also inspired, the, the activation statistic can represent the style. Huang et al. proposed the adaptive instance normalization in which the content image uses the same style statistics with the style images. Then 
based on this representation to generate a stylized image. To be specific, adaptive instance normalization simply, simply adjusts the mean and the variance of the content input to match those of the style input by subtracting its own mean, dividing its variance. When multiplying the star image's variance and adding the star image's mean, based on this internal representation, a decoder network is then learned to generate the, generate the final stylized image by inverting the adaptive instant uh, normalized output back to the image space. Here, they just use the mean and variance statistics. It is uh, just a standardization operation. They at all further use whitening and coloring, coloring operation to make the content image have the same grab matrix negative statistics. That is, they whitening the activations from the content images, then exploit the color transformation based on the re re respective statistics from the star images. This method can make sure the stylized images has the same statistics as the star image. In terms, in terms of the correlation statistics and mean statistics, rather than manually defining, defining how to compute the alpha parameters, so as to align the mean and variance between content and style features, dynamic instance normalization introduced by Jean et al. deals with arbitrary style transfer by encoding a style image into learnable convolution parameters, upon which the content image is stylized. In computer vision, image translation can be viewed as a more general, general case of image style transfer. Given the image in the source domain, the, aim to, the image to learn the conditional distribution of the corresponding images in the target domain. This includes, but is not limited to, the following tasks, for example, the short resolution, the colorization, the impeding, and the attribute transformer. Similar to style transfer, adaptive instance normalization is also an essential tool for image translation used in, for example, the multi model unsupervised image to image translation. Note that the affine parameters of adaptive instance normalization here are pro produced by a long-term network instead of computed from statistics of a pre-trained network as in the paper for the new style transfer. Apart from instance normalization, Chou et al. proposed the group-wise deep whitening and color transformation by matching higher-order statistics such as covariance for image-to-image -image translation tasks. Moreover, since the whitening or color transformation can be considered as a one times one convolution. Besides, U et al. proposed a rigid normalization for energy in patent network training. Rigid normalization divides spatial pixels into different regions according to their input mask and standardizes the activations in each region. GANs can be regarded as a general, general framework to produce a model distribution that mimics a given target dis distribution. A GAN consists of a generator which produces the model distribution and a discriminator which dis distinguishes the model distribution from the target. From this perspective, the ultimate goal when training GANs shares a similar spirit to model training in the domain adaptation task. The main difference is now in that 
scans try to reduce the distance between different distributions while domain adaptation models attempt to close the gap between different domains. Therefore, the techniques that apply batch normalization to domain adaptation, as discussed in domain adaptation, may work for GANs as well. For example, Combining samples from different domains in a batch for batch normalization may harm the generalization in domain adaptation, and this also applies for the training of GANs. Here, it is better to use the different batch normalization module for general generator examples and rare examples in, in discriminator rather than the single one, which is similar to the domain specific batch normalization. The main reason is that if you use only one batch normalization, the generated examples and the real examples are easily distinguished by the discriminator in the initial stage. This makes the discriminator provide a few gradient information to another distribution. One persisting challenge in training GANs is the performance performance control of the discriminator and the learning place control between the discriminator and the generator. The density ratio estimated by the discriminator is often inaccurate and unstable during training. And the generator may fail to learn the structure of the target distribution. One way to remedy this issue is to impose constraints on the discriminator. Miyato et al. proposed a spectral normalization, which enforces Leibniz's con conti continuity on the discriminator by normalizing its parameters with the spectral norm estimated by power iteration. Since then, spectral normalization has become an important technique in training GANs. Another important constraint in training GANs is the orthogonality. Juan Etel proposed orthogonization by Newton's iteration, which can effectively control the orthogonality of the weight matrix and the interplay between spectral normalization and the full orthogonization by authoring the iteration number. As discussed in the previous style transfer, the NRR operation of activation normalization can also be used as the side information for GANs. Under the scenario of conditional GANs, conditional GANs have shown advance, advancements in, in class conditional image generation, image generation from a text and image to image translation. Carlos et al. proposed a style-based generator architecture for GANs, where the style information is embedded into the affine parameters of adaptive instance normalization. Note that the style comes from the vector, latent vector instead of an example image, enabling the model to work without external information. Similarly, Chen et al. proposed a more general self-modulation based on conditional batch normalization. In their work, the effort parameters can also be generated by the generators or input or provided by external information. In real-world applications, it is, it is essential to consider, consider the efficiency of an algorithm in addition to its effectiveness due to the often limited computational resources, such as in smartphones. As such, the, there is also an active line of research exploring batch normalization to develop efficient deep neural networks based on network naming or quantization. In network naming, the general idea is to exploit the channel-wide scale, scale parameter gamma of batch normalization, considering that each scale gamma 
corresponds to a specific convolutional channel or neuron in a fully connected nerves. For example, Liu et al. proposed to identify and prunes insignificant channels or neurons based on the scale parameter in batch normalization nerves, which are imposed by L1 regularization for sparsity. Yet et al. also adopted a similar idea and developed, developed a new algorithm and the rescaling track to improve the robustness and the speed of optimization. Note that the channel pruning usually degrades the performance. Some extra training processing is needed to improve the performance. This is usually called iteratively pruning. The ITO proposed an efficient evaluation component based on, based on adaptive batch normalization which has a strong correlation between different prolonged deep neural network structures and their final static accuracy. Besides, the founder, it is very important to re recalculate the population statistics after the pruning. The main reason is that the pruning operation where affects the population statistics of the following batch normalization layers, which has significant effects for the performance of the model. This observation also be found in the previous SNMBO network. We had also trained a SNMBO network with a new variant of batch normalization, namely switchable batch normalization. For the network, Executable at a different violence. Switch for batch normalization privatizes the batch normalization for different switches of a SNMBO network, and each in individual batch normalization has independently, independently accumulated feature statistics. Switch for batch, batch normalization can thus be used as a general solution to obtain a good trade-off between accuracy and latency on the fly. Network quantization is another essential technique in building efficient deep neural networks. In network quantization, especially the weight quantization, it aims to find a quantized network here. Fw plus delta w nearly equals the arrangement Fw. Therefore, the quantization of a network can be injected noise into the weights. If one can handle this noise during training, it is possible to improve the performance of the quantized network. Naive batch normalization performs the normalization with empirical momentum averaging of train, training data without considerable noise injection. Such empirical moment averaging cannot successfully normalize the noise activations and therefore reduces the effectiveness of batch normalization in adjusting the activations distribution of previous layers. As a result, the computation error caused by noise weights keeps propagating and eventually leads to wrong predictions. Tsai et al. proposed noise aware batch normalization and illustrated its main idea in this figure. By recalculating the mini batch statistics with the noise injected into the model, the statistics of such unstable analogical, analogical computing environment can be tracked without knowing the actual characteristics of injected noise. The collaborated statistics normalize the intermediate activations properly and effectively pull the distribution of noise activations close to that of the clean one. This can improve the performance. In the last, we will discuss some other questions for the application of normalization. The first problem is that 
و many work have a motivation to exploit the normalization for domain environment learning to really know the domain environment features how to find it okay exactly the, as mentioned previously normalization methods can be used to edit the statistical properties of layer activations which has been exploited in computer vision tasks to match particular domain knowledge. However, we know that this me mechanism is seldom used in natural language process tasks. It would thus be interesting to investigate the correlation between the statistical properties of layer activations and the domain knowledge in natural language processing and further improve the performance in the corresponding tasks. In, a, in addition, there also exists an in, intriguing phenomenon that where batch normalization or group normalization works for the computer vision models, neural normalization is more effective in natural language process tasks. Intuitively, batch normalization or group normalization should work well for natural language process tasks consider that the current state of the art models for computer vision and the natural language process tend to be similar for example they also use the convolution operation and the attention and the group normalization is simply a more general general version of layer normalization it is thus important to further investigate whether or not batch normalization or group normalization can be made to work well for natural language process tasks and if not why besides the recent success of vision transformer model also use near normalization rather than batch normalization it is important to figure out whether the near normalization is is specific to transfer model rather than the natural language process data. Another, another interesting observation is that normalization is not very common in deep reinforcement learning. Consider that certain deep reinforcement learning framework, for example, the ACT or critical framework, are very similar to GANs. It should be possible to ex exploit normalization techniques to improve training in deep reinforcement learning, borrowing ideas from GANs, for example, normalizing the weights in the discriminator. Okay, as the key components in deep neural networks, normalization techniques are links that connect the theory and application of deep learning. We thus renew that these this techniques will continue to have a profound impact on the rapidly growing field of deep learning and we hope that this this tutorial will aid readers in building a comprehensive landscape for their implementations okay i have finished finished this tutorial thanks for your attention for this tutorial let's go to room for the co session